So we've just come to Kasane and we're at the docking port on the river. Um, we're going to get a boat. It's quite a large group of us, so again, I'm not going to do a lot to camera whilst I'm on the boat because I want to be respectful of the other people's, the other guests' um, game viewing experience. But uh, I'll do some commentary as I go and I'll take some video clips um, and then insert some of the still photos that I take. Um, it's just coming up to 4 p.m. and the sun is absolutely baking. So um, yeah, that's why I've got my sunglasses and my hat on because I actually forgot to put sun cream on. So I'll probably come off the boat looking like a lobster, but I'm um, gonna have a lot of fun doing this anyway. Whilst I've got a lot of experience going on safari in game drive vehicles, this was the first ever time I'd been on safari by boat, so I didn't know what to expect. That little baby is under three months. Really? Our guide Simon did an incredible job navigating along the Chobe River and really got us in very, very close to where the action was happening. I knew from doing my research that Chobe is a reserve that's renowned with elephants and I knew that I was going to see a lot of elephants on this particular safari. However, what took me by surprise is just how challenging it was to photograph the elephants because of the way they were submerged and feeding in the water. It made compositional choice extremely challenging and because this safari was in the afternoon with the sun high in the sky, the light was very harsh, creating some very, very difficult lighting conditions. The other abundant species, in addition to elephants, that are on the Chobe River are hippos. And there are a number of hippo pods that were scattered between the banks of the river and a little bit further into the middle of the river that we navigated through. Hippos is something that I haven't really done a lot of photography of, and it's something that I was really looking forward to. It's always good to be able to get an additional set of compositions, a set of images to add to your portfolio, and Chobe just didn't disappoint. All of the previous images I captured of hippos had always been from land onto a dam or a watering hole. This was very different. We were able to spot the hippos, approach them, getting close, and then it was about looking and watching and observing. And to get a good image you actually have to play a little bit of a waiting game and time isn't something that I had on my hands. This was a general safari, not a photographic safari. So I had to work very quickly, be very observant, and. I was lucky I got an egret that landed on the back of one of the hippos, which gave me a very unique image. So as I said, there are an abundance of elephants and we came across another group that came down to the bank to drink. And the scene was very busy. And it's at this point that it's important to make a very clear decision because you don't have much time. Do you want to isolate the subject, stick with your zoom lens, or do you want to pull back, use a wide angle lens and create an animal in the environment shot? The two are options. In this specific case, with the small baby, I decided to go for isolating the subject. And that concept of subject isolation continues. Often when elephants have finished drinking or submerging themselves in water, they'll come out onto the banks and here you can see one that's having a good dusting and drying off. That gives an opportunity to actually isolate one specific subject and get a very nice side portrait with some really nice light. As we sped through the waters, it's important to observe the surroundings and it was incredible how many water lilies that I saw on the Chobe River and in and amongst them you would see African jacana birds. This one I snapped very quickly in flight. After one of the elephant sightings, Simon spotted a black heron. 
This is the first time I've seen this bird and it has an incredible hunting behavior. It actually extends its wings. It then cuts out the reflections, buries its head beneath the wings in order to be able to spot its prey and fish effectively. And this afforded two incredible images. Another iconic species that you find on the Chobe is the African fish eagle. This for me was an incredible sighting. This fish eagle just stayed at the edge of the water with its two talons submersed and we got extremely close. I was able to take many, many images of this bird and get some very, very nice portraits with some of the reflected light on its white plumage and feathers. So as the sun started to lower in the sky and the safari started to draw to an end, I came to a couple of conclusions. This was a very challenging exercise, trying to juggle a combination of a video camera with a stills camera in a boat, often fast moving, often when we were actually coming to rest, the river continued to rock the boat. It made it quite challenging to be able to get very stable shots. Also, the timing that we had available for each of the sightings was relatively limited. It was good, we observed the behavior, we got captured the key moments, for example, with these giraffes drinking. However, we didn't spend a lot of time at each sighting, so you really had to work very, very quickly to get good, workable, usable shots. And as we headed back to dock the boat, we had an incredible African sunset and that gave me my last two shots of the day at an incredible location in one of Africa's most iconic safari destinations. <laughs>